JAG participants for New Valley High School. Jeremiah Rhodes, class of 2017, president. Please reserve your applause until all of the members are present. Ruth Aguilar, class of 2018, secretary. Donald Bradley, class of 2018, vice president of career development. Monica Marshall, class of 2017, vice president of social awareness. Jarvis Mort, class of 2017, Vice President of Civic Awareness. Courtney Randall, Class of 2018, Vice President of Community Service. Adrian Velasquez, Class of 2017, Vice President of Leadership Development. Jordan Timbers, Class of 2017, Treasurer. Daisy Arroyo, Class of 2018, Courtney Combs, class of 2017. Andrew Dawson, class of 2017. Angela Denton, class of 2017. Ashley Dunn, class of 2018. Thomas France, class of 2018. Katie Heller, class of 2017. Allison Holstein, class of 2018. Leah Jennings, class of 2017. Allie Perkins, class of 2017. Dylan Powell, class of 2018. Diana Ramirez Rosas, class of 2017. Isaac Randall, class of 2018. Phoenix Reed, class of 2017. Liz Salazar, class of 2017. Rocio Sanchez, class of 2017. Amanda Shepard, class of 2017. Yara Vasquez, class of 2017. And Ethan Warren, class of 2018. These are the members of our JAG program for this year. <clears throat> it is a remarkable honor and privilege to welcome you to the initiation and installation ceremony Tippecanoe Valley High School Jobs for America's Graduates program. Some of you may be wondering, or at least a bit unsure, as to what the initiation and installation ceremony is exactly. Well, if that is the case, I'm excited to tell you. This special occasion is for the TBHS JAG Career Association. The Career Association is student-led. Some of the students those who were elected have the privilege of serving as officers. You will learn more about what these officers will hope to accomplish and how they plan to get there as the ceremony progresses. But what you will do well to keep in mind is that even though not all career association members are officers, they are all leaders. I wear several different hats as JAG specialist at TBHS. I am a case manager for Work One the State Employment Office and Provider for JAG through the Department of Workforce Development. I'm a teacher, advocate, and coach. When it comes to the Career Association, I take a step back. My role becomes that of an advisor. The students gain the opportunity to run the show. Sure, I ensure that the structure of the Career Association is in line with the intentions of the National JAG model and that all officers are held accountable to maintain certain academic and attendance standards. I also facilitate career association meetings, but other than that, the students, in accordance with the policies of TBHS, do the leading. 
The possibilities of what the students may accomplish are limitless. I have heard of career associations that started, it started their own business and a career association that regularly produced influential members of its community and highly successful business persons. So I hope now that it is easy for you to see that this is a very important event. As the Career Association for the 2016-17 school year begins and its officers are installed. As the officers share their commitments with you moments from now, please try to pay close attention to just what it is they will be working to accomplish this year. This year we have already visited two college campuses, Ball State University and Bethel College. Students have taken career-related assessments, registered for the SAT, applied to college, filed the FAFSA, researched career-related research careers that interest them, presented on a career of choice, and begun preparing for a chapter-wide career development conference event, of which there are three. And we have begun our service learning project for this year, which is the promotion of disability awareness. Beginning next week, the students will prepare for the regional JAG Indiana Career Development Conference in South Bend on February 2nd. This is a great event organized by Work One Northern Indiana to promote a healthy understanding of competition while building the 21st century skills valuable for success. This will be our chief emphasis up to the time of the event. Meanwhile, time spent in the JAG classroom will continue to allow for career association activity, service learning development, and other classroom activities. After the Career Development Conference, we will explore employability skills, job survival, and specific job placement planning. It is also our desire that by the spring semester, this career association will operate very effectively and smoothly, and that its work over the year will be evident in the school and local community. Benjamin Franklin wrote, the noblest question in the world is what good may I do in it? The Jobs for America's Graduates program does not seek to answer that question. Rather, the JAG program is designed to help young people discover their individual answers to that question and then apply that answer effectively to everyday life. But for the program to be most effective, it requires meaningful relationship with people outside of the JAG classroom who also seek to answer the question, what good may I do? And I'm happy to say that we have several such relationships. I would like to thank each one of you for the part you play in encouraging and supporting at least one of our JAG students. <coughs> thank you so much for the good you do in the life of these adults young adults. It would be nearly impossible for me to recognize everybody who makes a contribution. There are so many ways that that is done. I would like to thank parents, siblings, other family members, mentors, and everyone who has a role. It matters. Thank you for what you do. You may not always see the what is happening that is beneficial. But I urge you to continue to keep doing so because you do make an impact. I'd like to recognize our advisory committee. We have members of our staff and teachers here at Canoe Valley High School who do what they can to help each member. Uh, members of this committee are Mr. Hutton, Mr. Schreiber, Ms. Englund, Ms. Yazel, Ms. Tillman, Mr. Franklin, Mr. Parker, Mr. Ingbrecht, and Ms. Owens. There are other members of the high school, pretty much everybody in this high school who help in ways that I cannot list or explain now. I would like to mention a couple. Ms. Coppice, our life skills instructor, is partnering with JAG this year to help with the promotion of disability awareness within JAG. Uh, Ms. Garion, our school treasurer, is partnering with our treasurer, Jordan Timbers, to help promote financial uh, literacy within our JAG program and to help Jordan develop. 
I'd also like to recognize Work One, our provider for Jack here at Tippecanoe Valley High School. There are many people that I could list from Work One. Uh, my supervisor last year, Mr. Jeremiah, he could not be here this evening, but he made a big impact. Uh, Ms. Yoakum, my supervisor this year, she's at the same meeting in Indianapolis that Mr. Jeremiah is, and so she could not be here either. I'd also like to recognize uh, Mr. Petri. He is a business service representative who is helping to place uh, these young individuals into jobs that will benefit them and their goals. And also, Mr. Corbett, he will be handing out certificates this evening. He is on the board for Work One Northern Indiana. We're very glad that he made it down here this evening. I'd also like to thank all previous JAG members. There is a foundation that has been laid, literally sweat and tears, went into preparing the ceremony last year and helped to make it what it is today. Once again, I, I urge you to continue to value what it is you do and to continue in persevering and that, knowing that it will help those here on the stage to continue to per persevere as well. I'd like to read an excerpt from a poem from the McGuffey Reader. If you would have your learning stay, be patient, don't learn too fast. The man who travels a mile each day may get around the world at last. I'm excited about this ceremony. We will officially begin it with the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Monica Marshall. She will be supported by her sixth period peers. They will sign the Pledge of Allegiance in support of Monica, who has a hearing impairment. Afterward, our administration will be represented by Mr. Hutton, who will share a pair of food remarks. Then you will hear the commitment of our officers. This will be followed by the JAG pledge. And then there will be the presentation of the certificates uh, commemorating their commitment. And then the JAG creed will be recited. And then I'm very excited to announce that our keynote speaker, Ms. Emily Monson, uh, from, she is an attorney in Indianapolis. She decided on her own uh, to come here and share with us, with this career association, and to share about disability awareness as well. We're very excited. It is a privilege to host her uh, this evening. And then our superintendent, Mr. Boggs, will close the ceremony.
um, talk about finding a way to lead in a way that they're excited about, that they're passionate about. We know that JAG is a good fit for us. We're excited that JAG helps us accomplish this mission for leadership, for growth, and for experience. We've seen what our students uh, can do as they go and compete at, at some of the regional content. Uh, we've seen this through our JAG program both here and at our Burkett Alternative School. We've had JAG students place very highly at the state level. We've had a lot of success in terms of seeing JAG students bring the Tippecanoe Valley out into the uh, community and represent us well through service projects, through food drives and things like that. We have seen just a tremendous amount of success and we're excited for JAG to be here. Um, they we find that our students through the JAG program represent us well as they're out in the community and out in the larger, larger group. JAG is a great way to connect for students with their future. We're pleased to have it as part of our culture and our curriculum here. And we're excited about JAG this year. This is a great group of students. Uh, you all dress very, very well. It's nice to see you. Now if we just need to do that a little more often, that'd be okay. <laughs> Some of you are uh, Donald, I think would be okay. You might wear that every day. So that's good. He pulls that off really well. I like it. I'd like to see Jeremiah in that, that suit a little bit more too. <laughs> But no, this is, a, this is a great opportunity. There are so many different things and so many different ways for people to be a Viking. And whether you're a Viking on the football field, whether you're a Viking on, a, in the, on the chess club, whether you're a Viking in Jack, we're just very excited to see you have a way to be representing to New Valley and to be out there pursuing your career and your future. So I just want to say good luck to all of you. Parents and friends and family, thank you so much for supporting them. And we're excited, very excited for another great year with Jack. Thank you. bi-weekly career association meetings. I plan to take on full responsibility for ensuring that each member of the TBHS JAG chapter is given ample opportunity to develop the skills and experiences needed to succeed after high school. This will accomplish through this will be accomplished through the various offices held and tasks completed by the career association. It is also my ambition and plan to host an event in the spring semester to promote disability awareness at TV agents. Thank you. Secretary, as a secretary, I, Ruth Aguilar, will maintain minutes of all career associations, meetings that will include all names of all in attendance as well the issues discussed and responses. I will ensure a high quality of all chapter correspondence letters. I will also work to maintain awareness of all presidential tasks and responsibilities. As Vice President of Career Development, uh, I, Donald Bradley, will uh, maintain bi-weekly contact with uh, Work One Service Representative, uh, Mr. Richard Petrie, uh, in order to increase various job shadowing and on-the-job experience for all the TBHS chapter members. Additionally, I will uh, collect and organize a list of future careers and uh, training aspirations of each chapter member for the use of the Career Association. And finally, I will seek to post two guest speakers in the spring who will assist the chapter members in career development. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Pres 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 President, I have the show I'm Monica Marshall. 
we'll start in making a monthly newsletter for TVH at JAG chapter. I will also plan to host have host a guest speaker in the spring. In order to increase the understanding of appropriate understanding of etiquette and of good reputation. As Vice President of Civic Awareness, I, Jarvis Mort, will do my best to communicate with local government or political leaders on a monthly basis. It is my hope that I will facilitate the hosting of two guest speakers before the end of the school year in order to promote civic awareness and involvement within the TVHS JAG chapter. Thank you. As Vice President of Community Service, I, Courtney Reno, will oversee the Chapter Service Learning Blog in preparation for the Career Development Conference. This includes, um, this includes com communication with TVHS Life School Instructor, Ms. Emma Coppice, and the promotion of community service opportunities promoting disability awareness. I will be hosting a guest speaker in the spring semester to educate and encourage chapter members to continue pursuit of community service opportunities and organize a chapter-wide community service project. Thank you. As Vice President of Leadership Development, I, Adrian Velasquez, will establish effective standing committees to promote leadership development of all JAG members by spring semester. This will begin with identifying the needs of the Career Association as a whole and its officers. As standing committees, these committees will be permanent and meet bi-weekly. Additionally, I will evaluate standing committee performance and share findings with President Rose and Vice Presidents in order to promote the future success of all JAG members. Select committees will be also be formed if appropriate. Thank you. As treasurer, I, Jordan Timbers, will participate at least a monthly meeting with TVHS treasurer, Mrs. Shelley Yerian. I will manage budgets and preparations for both TVHS JAG chapter accounts and for chapter events and funding plan and future planning for TVHS career associations. I will share lessons learned throughout the year with JAG members in order to promote both an individual financial management as well as pursuit and financial related careers for those who are interested. Please reserve all applause 
until the final member has been pulled. Each JAG member will have opportunity to have his or her picture taken as they receive their certificate. Jeremiah Rhodes. Adrian Velasquez. Jordan Timbers. Daisy Arroyo. Denton. Ashley Dunham. Katie Heller. Allison Holstein. Jennings. Ali Perkins. Diana Ramirez Rosas. Isaac Randall. Phoenix Reed. Rocio Sanchez. Liz Salazar. Amanda Shepard. Ethan Warren Please show your appreciation for this year's career session
my interests, to my interests abilities, abilities, and aptitudes. I believe, I believe the success of the free enterprise the system depends on the cooperation of business, education, labor, government, community, and the youth of this nation. I believe each individual has the responsibility to develop an appreciation for productive work and respect for all careers. I believe individuals should have the opportunity to develop their full potential and recognize their value to society. I believe my success is earned through my efforts at school and at work. I believe, I believe the growth of my abilities, the growth of my abilities and experiences, experiences gained through the Career gained. Association <laughs> will assure my future career successes. Thank you. great to be here with you this evening. And as an attorney, I have to admit, I never turned down the opportunity to listen to myself talk or prove a point. Um, but as I began to think about what I wanted to say, I realized that most of my speeches are actually literally uh, clever legal arguments or other occasions to persuade the audience. So what can I persuade you of this evening. Um, traditionally, these kind of speeches are given by famous people who speak about their accomplishments to inspire an audience. Um, as you know, I am an attorney, and in addition to my law degree, I have a master's in philosophy and will be earning an LM, the degree beyond the law degree, um, before December. I spend most of my day leading the employment practice group at Indiana Disability Rights, helping clients get services from vocational rehabilitation and file claims under Title I of the Americans with Disabilities Act. So when you think about it, I'm pretty much just a gal that's living an average life. I became an attorney largely at a necessity Looking at me, you can probably see that manual labor was not an option. Um, I had to choose a career that I could do behind the desk with my brain and my mouth. My hands have become too weak to type anymore, so I use voice recognition software. And because I'm fortunate to live in this technological age, most of my files and references can be found on the computer or even my iPhone. That's not to say that my path was necessarily easy. Even though I look great on paper, it took me three years to find a job after graduating law school. Employers were reluctant to take a chance on hiring me, and I graduated at the height of the Great Recession. Disability has also caused my fair share of embarrassing moments. Um, in college, I went to Hanover, which is in southern Indiana, and uh, since it is the oldest private college in the state, you can probably guess that it was not very accessible. I remember having to go to the bathroom and uh, getting transferred with a Hoyer lift, and I had to do it without pants, swinging down the hallway in a co-ed dorm room. So uh, most of these struggles weren't something I thought about. They were second nature. Um, they were just part of life that I had to get on with. But although my particular challenges might be different from theirs, from yours, 
I don't think there's anything that makes my challenges particularly unique. We as human beings all have our own struggles and burdens to bear. And since you are participants in the JAM program, I'm guessing that you've had your fair share of difficulties in reaching adulthood. I remember high school. It wasn't much fun. Um, and assuming that we can relate on this level, I'm going to share uh, one of my most embarrassing moments with you in hopes of um, talking a little bit about disability awareness. So go back in time seven years. I was in law school right after I was crowned Miss Wheelchair Indiana 2009. Um, I traveled to Rapid City, South Dakota for the national pageant. Uh, before you go questioning how this came to be, let me preface the story by telling you that uh, the competition was based on advocacy efforts as opposed to looks. Um, Donald Trump didn't sponsor the pageant, so I can assure you there was no swimsuit competition. <laughs> 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 Could I get one of you to help me flip the page? Thank you. Um, so I had spent a year talking to all kinds of people. I was on the Governor's Council for People with Disabilities. I was Vice President of the Muscular Dystrophy Family Foundation. And I represented people like me on the MDA Registry Advisory Board. Um, my platform was about emergency preparedness in the disability community. It was called We'll Be Prepared. Um, I had been communicating with the mayor's office and Red Cross about first responders and interactions with the disability community in times of emergencies. Um, it took all this very seriously, and uh, I, I spent time talking about this, and then we got to the final night of the competition. All the ladies were up on the stage as the entertainment began, and the lady in a sparkling sequin evening gown who we had never seen, ascended the stage, turned to us, and unleashed her inner Mariah Carey. She belted out hero. I was mortified. She didn't know me, and she thought I was a hero. I wondered if any of my fellow contestants were as humiliated as I was. You see, I hate being called an inspiration. It's embarrassing when I'm out and about and someone will say good job because I decided to go out to work or when a stranger pats me on the head because I ate out of the restaurant. There's nothing meaningful in those acts. I was just living. Yeah. So when people fuss over normal activities just because I'm in a wheelchair, it's as though they have lowered expectations of me simply because I'm in a wheelchair. Imagine my surprise then, several years later, when I was out with one of my best friends, and also an active disability advocate, who told me that I inspired her. Did she not understand what an insult that was? Immediately thoughts flooded in my head. Did she know me at all? Were we really friends? It was a good thing she was driving the van and couldn't see as I began sobbing. Shannon and I asked, why would you say that to me? She told me that she was inspired by my persistence, by what she at least called my eloquence, and by my advocacy. And I knew that her words were genuine. She did know me, and was complimenting me on my accomplishments and talents, rather than the fact that I was living as a person with a disability. She said that I inspired hope that her son, who had a disability, could go on and do good things. She thought about how he could have a job in a family of his own one day. Shannon's sincerity changed my views and helped me change a, a couple of my life principles that day. And these, these are some things that I want to leave you with as you begin your career development. 
First, recognize that you have the ability to inspire action in others. I don't mean action in people thinking you're an inspiration, like some kind of internet meme. I mean living normal, unextraordinary lives. You have gifts and talents and skills that can be put to great use. When I think about those who have inspired me, I think about people like my grandmother, who actually died 10 years ago today, and whose depth of kindness couldn't be fathomed. She certainly wasn't famous or wealthy, but she was amazing. And thank you. Um, my grandmother didn't start from a position of wanting to be an inspiration. She simply lived a compassionate, curious, and adventurous life. I'm only 32 and still lack many of the answers to life's questions, but I believe that when we live our lives to the fullest, not in terms of packing them with social engagements or work, but rather fully throwing ourselves into our passions and devoting our lives to them, that we become worthy of emulation. And if you do that in the Gen program, you will be inspirational to my friends. Secondly, and relatedly, never be afraid to say yes to an opportunity. Many young people, and especially women, have a tendency to feel underqualified, either for professional activities or otherwise. Don't second guess yourself and apply for anything that you believe you might be qualified for. Am I slightly embarrassed about being a former badger winner? Absolutely. But I certainly don't regret meeting other advocates from around the country, learning how to fundraise, or traveling to Rapid City. After all, what legitimate reason does one actually have to vacation in South Dakota? Um, occasionally, you might be turned down from your first college pick or from your first few job applications. But don't let these rejections get you down. Remember that it isn't always the experiences that look best on a resume that have the most formative influence in the long run. In college, the home health agency that was serving me um, ended up going bankrupt and closing. Because Hanover was such a small town, there was no other agency that could meet my overnight staffing needs. I had to spend that semester back home in Indianapolis on a whim. I decided to write Governor Daniels who at the time had just taken office, to see if he had anything I could do. It turned out that his chief of staff was a Hanover graduate. He wrote me back, and I became Governor Daniel's first intern. All it takes is a try, and a little effort can go a very long way. It also shows that you know setbacks might just open another door to an even better place. And third, Maybe most importantly, I've learned that we are all interdependent on one another. We live in America where self-reliance is promoted as a crucial component of the American dream. It's unusual to recognize, or in my case, even relish the fact that we have to rely on others to live our lives, that we can't do it alone. Sometimes I think this is why people find inspiration and those with disabilities, whether rightly or wrongly, because the fear of accepting help has to be overcome by people with disabilities. Yeah, in addition to being helped by others for a wide range of activities, going to the bathroom, getting dressed in the morning, going to bed, even opening a can of Coke, Shannon helped me realize that I also have the ability to give. In proceeding with my passion for disability rights, I've gained a lot of knowledge that I share with families affected by disability. I've helped many people work their way through state and federal bureaucracy to obtain benefits or leave the benefit system and have independent careers. I also devote time and attention to mentoring high schoolers with disabilities. My mentees are in high school and um, 
They tell me that, and I thank them for being a part of my life. When I was in school, I always thought about the future, what I would do as an adult, rather thinking about what I could do in the moment and what I had to other off offer others in that moment. You guys have so much to give. In preparing to come here today, I read about Indiana's JAD program, including the fact that its students have logged over 213,000 volunteer service hours. That's absolutely incredible. And I hope you guys aren't offended when I say that that inspires me. Today is <clears throat> certainly a big step in getting installed into the program. But remember in the days that follow, those small, extraordinary steps are also important. In the words of Mary Templeton, a philanthropist and leader in the tech industry, small and steady steps can be quite big and spectacular. They move you to a different place. Indeed, it's a succession of these small steps that have led me to have a tremendously blessed and beloved life. It is small steps with which my grandma inspired me, and it is small steps or real rotations, if you will, that enable me to inspire Shannon. If you remember anything from this speech, I hope it's that you will continue to take small steps toward your passion. Life may send you some setbacks, but you can get through them. In fact, if you're focused on your passions, you may not even be aware of all the rigmarole around you on a daily basis. Don't be afraid to receive the support of others, and don't be afraid to offer your support to others. Although you might not fully realize your potential or place now, realize that the small steps of life directed from your innermost wants have the potential to take you exactly where you belong, even if you don't know where it might be yet. Thank you. ceremony. Um, after last year's ceremony, I shared a story with him uh, that he encouraged me to share with you tonight, so I would like to do that. About 10 years ago, then high, uh, Tiffany Valley High School principal Kirk Norman and I attended uh, an informational session in Indianapolis, and it was about jobs for America's graduates. We liked what we heard. We wanted to see if it was possible to bring this program to Tiffany Valley High School. So a short time later, we scheduled a meeting with a JAG representative, and uh, he came to Tiffany Valley to speak with us. We were told that for a variety of reasons, that wasn't possible. I guess at that time, it said JAG served students primarily in urban areas and was not available to students in rural districts. We were disappointed, but we understood. It wasn't more than a year or two later, though, that we were contacted by JAG and they wanted to know if we would be interested in bringing Jack to Tiffany Valley. So we started with a small program at Burkett, and uh, I think the year after that we had a program here at the high school, and we now have two Jack programs at Tiffany Valley. Last year, Tiffany Valley had the highest graduation rate in Kosciuszko County. I think everybody here hopefully knows that. And I can tell you that Jack was one of the primary reasons why. I appreciate Jack's focus on keeping our young people in school through graduation. I appreciate its focus on providing work-based learning experiences that will lead to career advancement opportunities or enrolling in post-secondary education. I love the fact that Jack students are actively engaged in career exploration, that they practice leadership development as they plan their future and uh, plan how they're going to transition either to the labor market or some type of education after high school. I appreciate that JAG students receive adult mentoring while they're in school 
and that they also have one year of follow-up counseling after graduation. Our vision at Tiffany Valley is to do whatever it takes to equip all students to be outstanding today, tomorrow, and beyond. We accomplish this by being committed to their success through the development of character, leadership, and literacy. The JAG program is a very important part of what we do here at Tiffany Valley because of its commitment to student success. The students, some of you face significant challenges in your pursuit of a high school diploma. As a member of this class, you're a participant in a wonderful opportunity, one that could change your life. Congratulations on having the wisdom to participate in the JAG program. And I challenge you to work hard and make sure that you take full advantage of everything JAG has to offer each one of you. I look forward to shaking your hand, those of you who are seniors this year at graduation, as you complete the grad or the JAG program and earn a diploma from Tiffany Valley High School. And also, family members, I want to thank you for attending tonight's ceremony in support of your student. Your continued support and encouragement will be necessary to help your son or your daughter reach their full potential and become outstanding today and tomorrow.